Welcome to Quality Improvement Plans and Quality Improvement Science, the basics. In this series, we will present a very quick look at QI science and how its basic methods can be used not only to help you to create your QIP, but also to help you make progress on your indicators. Welcome to the third in our video series of three QIP and QI science videos. My name is Alice Strawn, and I am a Quality Improvement Specialist with Ontario Health, and I hope you enjoy this video. As mentioned, this is video three of a three-part series, which also included videos on how to identify your problem, determine your aim and select indicators, diagnose what the root causes are for your problem, and identify change ideas and process measures for the indicators you have chosen for your QIP, the focus of this video. It is intended to help you use a solid QI framework, the model for improvement and PDSAs, to help you to not only create your QIP, but to implement it. It is recommended that you watch these videos in order to get the maximum benefit, although they can also be viewed as standalones. By watching this video, you will know how to use the results of your diagnostic process and data, choose appropriate change ideas, understand how to select process measures so that you can understand whether or not a change idea is effective. Understand the concept of many small tests of change that link the indicator chosen. No video on QI is complete without the model for improvement. What we are talking about today, change ideas and process measures, is the third question of the model, and how you test out your change ideas is using the Plan, Do, Study, Act, PDSA cycle. You can see how the PDSA cycle is connected to that third question, and that it is a continuous cycle, so that you are constantly testing and trying. Here's how the model for improvement maps onto the quality improvement plan. Question one, what are we trying to accomplish? Are the established provincial system quality themes and dimensions? Question two, how will we know that changes and improvement is reflected in the QIP as the standardized priority indicators with organizationally determined targets? Question three, what change can we make that will result in improvement? The focus of this video is reflected in the QIP as the organizational plan improvement initiatives with process measures. And here's where it shows on the work plan. What are we trying to accomplish? What's your aim? How will we know the changes and improvement? It is under measure. In today's video focus, what change can we make that will result in improvement is in the green pain section. So why is measurement so important? Let's take the example of playing golf. You would understand the importance of data if you played a game of golf. You're out there playing your game, recording your score at each step. You're getting real-time feedback on your performance. Maybe you decide to try something different, use a, a different club. So you go ahead and test it. At the end of the round, your score will give you a glimpse if the change made a difference. If you feel like your game is not going well, your total score at the end of the course will give you precise feedback on your performance. You can include, based on historical comparisons, if you proved to remain consistent or got worse. And there's nothing better than that stimulating conversation about that data afterwards with your friends. By measuring how well you play in golf, you have an idea if things are getting better. You're learning about your system, which clubs work better for you, and monitoring your progress to your set aim of being a better golfer. The key here is that you're collecting and using data at multiple levels. The overall score, the outcome if you like, is important to you and something you are hoping to improve. But at the same time, you know that that overall score is made up of number of putts, use of irons versus driver off the tee, distance, Although the goal is a lower overall score, you will only see that if you focus on what makes up that score. As you know, data is a key component of the QIP. And although some is pre-populated for you under current performance, you are to select your own process measures so that you can see the results of your change ideas. It is important if you can, that you can see if your change is working or not so that you can celebrate success, but also to adapt if things are not going as you predicted. There are different types of measures involved in any QI project. There is, of course, a big system level aim, something we are trying to achieve to provide an outcome that benefits the citizens of Ontario. And it might be something like reducing wait times. Then there will be an outcome measure, potentially avoidable emergency department visits. These are reflected in the indicators. Then there will be local project level process measures, increase the use of a nurse practitioner in making decisions about a transfer. Then there will be process measures with each change idea percent of staff who report an increased understanding of when to call the nurse practitioner after completing a training session. Although these are distinct measures, they all interact to cause change in the system. A couple of important comments around measurement and the collection of data. 
First, do not allow this to become a barrier. Sometimes we want all of the possible data collected and analyzed, and then all that data confuses us. Remind yourself of your aim and go. Remember in QI, we want just enough data at the process measure level so that we can tell if what we are doing is working or not. And we want to use that data for learning. It's for light to help us learn, not heat, which is judgment. Don't get caught in analysis by paralysis. Use your data to celebrate successes and learn from failure, but collect it and use it. I also want to be sure I reinforce up front how important it is to make data collection as simple as possible. A piece of paper and a pencil and some check marks is perfect. If your data collection becomes too onerous, that will result in increased workload and no one is looking for more things to do in healthcare. You want everyone to embrace your QIP and making data collection simple and easy is a great step to engage others. So how do you decide on what change ideas to focus on? Let's talk about change ideas and change concepts. There are two types of changes we can make. Reactive changes, which are about keeping the system running. They allow us to react and solve problems very quickly, but they have very short-term impact. Then we have fundamental changes, which fundamentally alter the way in which we do our work. These are necessary for improvement beyond just addressing problems on a regular basis. And these have a lasting impact. Often a reactive change is your only strategy though, and it is important for organizations to make reactive changes to respond to the system and to write what is happening. Remember my problem statement from the previous videos about being late to work? A reactive change would be that I am doing this because my boss said if I was late one more time, I was going to be fired. So there are changes or reactions that I could make that would probably make me be at work on time, but wouldn't have lasting impact. Things like driving faster or um, perhaps trying to uh, shortcut ways to work or skipping my morning routine or not taking my lunch. But if I truly want to be able to change my behaviors, I, because I don't like the stress of being late for work, and I really want to do something that's fundamentally different, then I'm going to look at some longer lasting changes in my behavior. I'm going to think about things that I can do that will actually change the way in which I behave in the morning versus react to the fact that I'm afraid I'm going to lose my job. The important notion here is that it's not the size of the change, but the impact that the change has. Big improvements can often be realized by making small changes directed at the right places in the system. But just be careful to be thinking about the fact that those changes are fundamental and not reactionary workarounds. Where do change ideas come from? There are various sources of change ideas. Of course, we know that there's evidence out there. There are quality standards. There are best practice guidelines. There are frameworks from other organizations. There's all kinds of places to go to look and find evidence about quality improvement and change ideas. One of the greatest sources of information about what you might be doing differently are your frontline staff. And of course, that would also include your, your patients, people who touch and feel this system. Involve them in the diagnostic process and ask them about their if onlys. If onlys are the things that they say probably every day. If only we could do this differently. If only we could change this process. If only we could do that. Ask them what those are. Think about experience. If you've experienced a process that did not work, think about how you might be able to improve it. Don't discount and say, we could never do that here. You might not be able to do that, but what could you do? Or what elements of what you've experienced and the change ideas that you're thinking about, could you try? Don't lose sight of the fact that great ideas often come from being creative. QI can be fun. And sometimes those way out there ideas, when you begin to actually pick apart at them, do suggest some really creative ways to make change. Thinking about all the information that you've learned from your diagnostics is important. What is your current state telling you? What did your process map tell you? What did your root cause tell you? What did your Pareto chart tell you? Look at that data and analyze it so that you can understand what potential change ideas it's suggesting. And there is something called the change concepts. There are 72 of them. They are big buckets of ideas. Things like focus on variation, reduce duplication, reduce transportation. They are not change ideas themselves, but they give you big buckets of ideas where you begin to think about what you might be able to do in your organization. You can use these to spark discussions with your frontline staff and patients if they're struggling to come up with ideas. 
How could we reduce variation? How could we reduce duplication? One thing to be aware of is that sometimes there is a need to just do something in order to be able to get to the point of being able to make change. So gathering survey responses, as an example, is not a change idea itself. It is an activity that will gather more data in order for you to be able to pick some change ideas. It's okay to have some activity in your quality improvement project. As a matter of fact, you'll probably have to do that. But improvement is focused on testing change. So think about change ideas as being things that you can do where you can test your theory about making changes to a process that are contributing to a problem in order to be able to improve. Once you have selected your change ideas, you can begin to think about what you might actually be able to do to test them out. So here's an example. Let's say you decide to test out a new information pamphlet for residents and their families on goals of care. Before you print 10,000 of those brochures, test the wording and the format, but know what data it is you're looking at to collect through that test. It's vitally important to understand what is it that I want to know by running this test. It tells you what data to collect. So you're probably curious about if people understand what you've written and if it answers all the questions. Therefore, the data you would want to collect are the percent of reviewers that feel the content was easy to understand and the percent of reviewers that felt all their questions were answered through the pamphlet. Showing someone a draft version of a pamphlet is a PDSA and a really important step to take so that you can be more sure that the change ideas that you're testing are actually going to lead to improvement. Here is the PDSA cycle, the plan, do, study, act cycle. This is about testing and learning with a big focus on the learning stage. The four steps in the cycle consist of planning the details of the test and making predictions. Those predictions tell us what data it is we want to collect in that. As I just mentioned, that collection of data is vitally important. You learn from comparing the predictions of the test, what you thought was going to happen, to what actually happened in the study phase. And then you take action based on your new knowledge. By using a PDSA approach, you are ensuring that you are collecting data and using it to learn more about what your next steps might be. Remember how connected that PDSA cycle is to that third fundamental question of what change can we make that will result in improvement? The study phase is the most important in that this is where you learn from what you have tried and decide on next steps. But PDSA is an iterative cycle. It is not a one and done. It helps us to accelerate learning through an iteration of tests that are spurred by our predictions. Each test builds on what was learned in the previous test until you have an implementable solution. So you try a very small test, you learn, you follow up with another test, you learn, you take a wider scale approach to see if it works in different situations, you learn, and then you're ready to implement, which will lead to improvement. Let's take a look at an iteration concept relative to my late for work example. So remember my, I wanted to be uh, on time for work as I was, my symptom was I was getting behind in my work and I decided to focus on finding an alarm that enables me to wake up on time. So my first PDSA, new sound on my phone alarm. I learned from that. Second PDSA, a second sound to see if that's more effective. I learned from that. PDSA number three, a second alarm that's out of my reach. And I learned from that. PDSA number four, I increased the volumes of the alarms. And at that point, the alarm is waking me every morning, which is the improvement I was looking for. But in reality, as you get going with your improvement initiative, you will have more than one test going on at the same time, with tests at different stages of progress. Each one will involve the collection of data so that you can learn what is working and what is not, celebrate success, and adapt quickly and be agile when things aren't working the way you thought they would. I would be collecting data on how many times I am at work on time, but also on the number of times I sleep through the alarm, the number of times I pick out my clothes the night before, the number of times I make my lunch the night before, and the number of new ways to work I try, or the number of times I get stuck in traffic. What this graphic demonstrates is I am testing changes in four different areas at the same time to help me reach my aim of being on time for work, but I am at different stages within each one of those PDSAs. So hints for planning useful PDSA cycles, always be thinking a couple of cycles ahead. If I learn this, then I'm gonna do that. Don't confuse task with test. Remember I said there are some things that you are gonna just have to do in order to get yourself ready to be tested change, and that's fine. But just don't confuse something that is a task with a test 
that you're going to try for learning. Make sure you document your tests. Use some sort of form. There are PDSA templates on the QIP website. Be innovative. Don't be afraid to try something new. The only way you'll know is if you test it and try it, and one of two things will happen. It will work or it won't, and you'll need to adapt. If you're using temporary supports to make the test feasible, just be very aware that if those temporary resorts aren't always going to be there, that may affect the sustainability of the improvement that you're making. So if you need to allot extra employee time in order to make a test feasible, think about whether or not you'll actually be able to maintain the improvement without that employee time being there. And always, always, always scale down the size and the time required for the initial step. If you think that you're going to test this with an entire ward, what about testing it with one patient? If you think you're going to do it with all the doctors at one site, try testing it with one provider. You want to do it for the month of April, try doing it on April the 1st. And drop down two. If you're going to test within the next four months, think about dropping it down so you test for a week. If you're thinking about a week, drop it down so that you're testing just for a day or even just an hour. Make your test of change small so that you can learn quickly and be able to adapt. Here's where you can find additional resources. On Quorum, learn, share, and collaborate to improve healthcare quality in Ontario. Within that site, you'll see QI tools and resources, lots of tools and templates and resources to help you with your quality improvement plan and your quality improvement projects. And indicators and change ideas. Here's where we've collected change ideas from previous quality improvement plans related to each indicator so that you can see what other organizations have done. This is a great place to start to look for your change ideas. There's also the QIP website and QIP Navigator, and there you'll find the guidance documents, the technical specifications, and the overview of the quality priorities for that quality improvement plan. You can also always connect with a quality improvement specialist at Ontario Health at QIP at hqontario.ca. There also will be additional webinars so you can hear about what's new, help sessions that give focused and interactive guidance on specific topics, drop-in sessions where a QI specialist can answer your questions and offer you support, and videos on QI basics, tips and tricks to help you create and submit a quality improvement plan. We hope you've enjoyed this video and that it's helped you with both the creation of your quality improvement plan and the implementation of your plan.